The programming language is our interface for speaking to the computer and getting it to follow our instructions. We write code in what we refer to as a high-level language. Some examples of high-level languages include C++, Python, Ruby, Scala, Fortran, and Java, which is the language we're using in this course. The instructions we ha write have a syntax, basic rules that we must follow in writing each statement that another program called the compiler uses to convert the high-level instructions to a low-level state that the machine itself can implement. The computer stores all data as binary information, zeros and ones. This also includes instructions. We would struggle to write code in binary, which is why a wonderful woman named Grace Hopper did all of us a favor in inventing the compiler. With a compiler, we can write our code in a form that resembles English. It still has patterns and rules which must be obeyed, but the code is readable to us. The compiler then translates those words and symbols, referred to as tokens, into instructions specific to a machine's instruction set architecture. Most machines have a limited vocabulary of their own, and these instructions map to specific actions that the computer can execute. Some examples include add, jump, fetch, store. Some of our individual high-level Instructions, when translated, make up several instructions in machine code. We consider these instructions still readable, but less so. This stage is what is known as assembly code. From there, each instruction can be mapped to binary codes that refer to specific machine operations, memory locations, and numerical representations. More recently, another model for translating high-level instructions has emerged. Code that is read in small pieces and translated on the fly is called interpreted code. Let's look at three common languages to see the advantages of these models. In C++ we have a compiled language. The instructions for a C++ program are compiled for a specific instruction set, i.e. your machine. This means that the lines execute more quickly and can be optimized during the compile process to become more efficient. Unfortunately, your code is not portable as a distinct version needs to exist for every type of instruction set architecture. Looking at Python, we have an interpreted language. These instructions are translated on the fly, which grants us machine independence. Our high-level code is portable, but runs more slowly as pieces are frequently compiled for a specific machine at runtime. In Java, the language we're going to use, we have a hybrid process. Java is compiled to an intermediate stage called bytecode. This bytecode can be run on any machine by the Java virtual machine which does what is known as just-in-time translation of bytecode to machine code. The Java virtual machine already knows the specifics of your machine, so it can translate faster than an interpreted language like Python. This model does allow for machine independence and runs faster because it has been pre-compiled. There are many programming languages, and each offers advantages and disadvantages for particular tasks. Your choice of one language over another is usually based on the type of programming task you're taking on. Java is a good general purpose language and has features common to most languages. This course will focus on the basic features included in Java, which you can use throughout your programming lifetime, even as you move on to other languages. Our next topic will address the system that the machine language is based on, binary numbers.